<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Today, we're going to be wrapping up our Cloak and Dagger adventure series. Uh, I'm also joined here by my most adorable co-host, Nora, learner initiate for storytelling. And, well, when it comes to running these adventures, we talked a bit about the various organizations that can and do engage in clandestine activity. But there's a, something that we can do as storytellers, as DMs, as MCs, whatever title you may go by. There's that one little extra step that we can engage in to try to make these organizations' presence feel a bit more alive, a bit more interactive, and also something as a resource that the players can utilize. How much they can utilize it depends a bit on the role-playing, on the story, and the characters standing within the faction, which again, their standing will change over time depending on how things go. But the way that we can do this is by creating and assigning different ability scores to these factions. And in my mind, simpler is a little bit better in this case because there's so many different things you can do. You can break up the various, uh, you can assign so many different scores to any given faction. But simpler is better because it makes your job a little bit easier and you don't really need a whole huge encompassing list of different things and different statistics and different abilities you just need really three categories first is influence that certain intangible ability for a group to affect change or affect various groups and organizations and the people that make up those groups uh, influence are things like a, a given faction's mercantile influence any religious influence they may have or political Anything like that could be considered just a degree of influence. A personal prestige can even count as a bit of influence. I mean, think about the number of, any number of stories with heroes and the like that go on to accomplish these incredible deeds. These stories that are sung by bars the world over. The kinds of things that become myth and legend. Those people will have a great degree of influence. Um, think about, as our own world example, a real world example, that is, think about the number of celebrities and professional athletes and the degree of influence that they can wield. It's definitely more of a personal level, but they can affect things quite a bit and have things go their way just by virtue of their personality, their charisma, who they are, how famous they are, the personal prestige that they carry can affect things greatly. And that's what I consider to be influence. All those different things, all those different factors wrapped up under one nice, neat little category. The second category is most easily called, in my mind, something like subterfuge, uh, something like that. A, a faction subterfuge score is represented by, well, things like their ability for like spying, counter-spying, assassinations, uh, blackmail, theft, any of those kinds of things would be wrapped up nice and neat underneath a subterfuge score. Um, while that can be a part of influence, I think it's still better to keep them separate, although one can affect the other. For example, uh, if a say a governmental organization employs you know its own spies its own spy networks and uh, has some steel secret documents from a rival nation that gives their diplomats an edge in negotiations later on so that for whatever role their diplomats may make they would go into it with a bonus on top of whatever their influence score may give them uh, the third category would be you could call it might, their ability to project physical force, to use force of arms to enact change and make their power known. Military organizations, just by their nature, would have an incredibly huge might score. Well, a well-funded or overfunded military would have a massive might score. They would also potentially have their own degree of influence and their own, um, their own subterfuge scores as well, but 
for this example, just a military would have its own mic score in this particular case. Now, to the one step that I do to complicate these things just a little bit is not all organizations will use their own individual scores to make their own checks. For example, if we take a look at, say, our own United States government, uh, the, the government itself has its own number of different factions and chapters uh, and divisions underneath of it, as we could take a look at Democrats and Republicans as their own two separate factions within the larger governmental system. Uh, the military, while the military is, is uh, war is politics by other means, uh, so it definitely has its place within the political arm, but in, in and of itself, the military is n not quite its own it's part of the government but it's separate it's a division underneath the government and that's part of what i'm getting at here the government in and of itself does not would not by this system use its own might score its own might score would could be considered relatively small because you're looking at things like personal bodyguards uh like um uh, like the secret service while they are highly trained well equipped and well funded uh as an organization they're still relatively smallish in numbers in the grand scheme of things. So their ability to project force is relatively low. They may have a have a different uh, a decent uh, espionage score just on the basis that you know they're there as an organization to prevent, say, the president from being assassinated. But overall, uh, the government in and of itself, you know, the, the presidency, the House, the Senate, uh, the judicial branch, uh, they would not have a might score in and of themselves, but the government organization as a whole, having the military underneath of it as its own subcategory, its own sub organization, that's what they would use as their might score. Uh, the U.S. government would have its own considerable influence score, but for espionage and the like, their own uh, own espionage score, you'd be looking at organizations like the CIA, the FBI, uh, the Homeland Security. These organizations would engage in plenty of their own bits of espionage, whether that's spying on foreign governments, spying on their own citizens, or, or performing counter espionage actions against uh, foreign hit governments that might be conducting these activities. So that's just one example there. The other example that I have in mind that uh, uh, for an organization that might not use its own score is, like I mentioned before, an organization that's embedded within a larger one that uh, makes use of the larger organization's various different scores. And in that particular case, this little organization that may be the controlling organization what again would use the host organization's own might espionage and influence scores the smaller sub organization may actually have their own better influence or influence or espionage scores but it's not always the case but it just depends on the context and the story that you have set up in mind and what kind of role this embedded organization has overall in the story. So assigning these scores, what would the point of that be then? What benefit do does assigning scores to these organizations have? Well, like I said, this is a step towards making these various factions feel a bit more alive. And to, in order to add to this, different organizations will have some of their own different unique abilities, for example. Uh, a military's ability to engage in war, well, they would certainly have a greater degree of war ability or or the ability to make war, rather. Governments would too, but they would do so by virtue of their militaries that are underneath of them. But the government would also be the ones that have the option and the ability to try to engage in peace talks, trade negotiations, things like that mercantile organizations would have a similar ability being able to uh, engage in trade talks and try to engage in commerce 
And so creating and assigning these abilities, depending on the faction, would be another step towards making these groups feel alive. So where do the players come in on this? The players, by virtue of the fact that they have whoop, a good degree more influence and ability to affect change than, say, other individuals within a faction might, can do things to help boost their own faction's score or try to raise their faction's ability to um, affect change. And also, they would be the ones on the front lines of whatever type of engagement they're in to try to employ these abilities, or the organization or faction may employ these abilities on their behalf, just because the player character's mission being successful would only benefit them. It's just how important that mission is may affect how, uh, how much in the way of resources they devote towards it, but for just for the purposes of gameplay, just assume that if the players are engaging in a military campaign and they want to roll a, a might check to see if they can uh, get sappers put in place for besieging an enemy castle in order to try to breach the walls and make things go a bit more smoothly in assaulting a castle, we would assume that a larger military organization would already be on top of that. But in bringing this about by having a score and using having the players make use of a faction's ability they you can make a role on it and by introducing these roles you know for you know sappers making a wall breach you add a certain element of chance and uncertainty to it all it potentially could make the course of this castle siege go much easier for the players and the thus the military organization as a whole but it's not always going to be successful nor should it always be successful so by adding in these die rolls using a relatively simple system you have a way of making these factions feel a bit more alive so i think now by this point you can see how this would apply to clandestine organizations you know um the, not only could the players be spies but say say you have an ambush planned in the uh, script in the story that you have planned and laid out you could give the players a chance whether you have them make the role or you make the role yourself if they're part of an organization a faction that has a good degree of espionage and there's an ambush coming about you can make an espionage role or a subterfuge role for the players to see if the faction they're part of knows about the ambush if they know about the ambush they can warn the players ahead of time and turn that ambush around on the people attacking them so in a way it makes the fact it makes it seem like yeah. hey this faction's looking out for us and it has a tangential gameplay effect on the larger world it makes it feel more alive and engaging it makes it feel like there are other parts moving it um, through role playing and descriptions you can make that clear in and of itself but by having an added mechanical benefit it only serves to enhance the effect and make things just that much more engaging and the fact that the players can actively improve their own factions various scores as well as take actions to decrease the effectiveness of other organizations it just makes it feel that much more real fun and engaging but with that said, I'm going to wrap this up for now. This has been my Cloak and Dagger series for making better campaigns. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I certainly have been enjoying recording it and trying to get it done with this learner initiated storytelling here, causing all sorts of merry havoc and uh, making it so that this master of lore has to constantly organize and reorganize the storage of information and fun times. But sorry, I'm rambling a bit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you've had a wonderful holiday season. And if you've been enjoying this content so far, consider giving this video a like. If you've been liking everything you've seen so far, why not subscribe to us? Add more people that are viewing the content here. Um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you've done so far. Uh, even though having done so far has been viewing, it's still massively appreciated. I enjoy seeing people 
of seeing that people are taking the time to view this content, and hopefully you all have been finding something worthwhile in it all. I hope you all have yourselves a happy new year and a good night. Once again, I've been your master of lore, Jordan, and this has been Nora, my learner initiate of storytelling. Good night, everybody.